When we get to chapter 45, we've actually come to the climax of the book of Genesis. It's really the high point of the whole story. The transformation in Jude, Judah's character, he becomes a new person, and the revelation of Joseph's identity. Judah becomes someone they've never known before, a redeemer. Joseph reveals himself as one that they had already that they had always known, but they didn't know that he had come back into their presence again. The book of Genesis is a story about what happens when we tell lies, what happens when we don't understand what our true identity is. In the Garden of Eden, there is a serpent. He says to Eve, what did God say to you? That, did He say you couldn't eat from any tree in this beautiful garden? She said, no, he said we couldn't eat from the fruit of this one tree, but when we ate from the fruit of this one tree, this, this tree of knowledge, that we would die. The serpent says, you will not die. Somebody's lying. This is the great question. Who's, who's lying? Who's telling the truth? Abram says to Abimelech in chapter 12, she's my sister. She's not my wife. Abraham says to a Pharaoh in chapter 20, I can't remember if it's 20 or 12, whether it's Abimelech or Pharaoh, which chapter it is, but you can look it up. She's my sister. Somebody's lying. Isaac does the same thing with Rebekah. Jacob says, I'm Esau. The brothers, uh, Laban sends a girl into the tent. Jacob thinks it's Leah. The brothers say to their father, this is our brother's coat. We found it. It's got blood on it. He must have been torn up by a wild animal. Everybody's lying. By chapter 45, the truth is established. Now, when we lie, we do two things. First, we offend God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty as creator. God is the creator of history. What happens, happens because of God's sovereign control. If one thing happens and we say that something different happened, what we're saying is we want to be the creator. We want to create a new reality and we want to steal God's sovereignty from Him. We want to be sovereign, not God. When we lie, we offend God's morality because God tells us, to tell the truth. And so we, one thing we need to learn is we need to learn not to lie. I told you in the beginning of Genesis this great quote from Solzhenitsyn during the Soviet period. He said, if we are ever to redeem the individual, not the country, not the nation, the individual, if we are ever to redeem the individual from totalitarianism, the first thing we must teach him is to stop lying. Now the truth is being established. Now they know who Joseph is, and now they know that he knows who they are and what they did. Chapter 45, verse 1 says, Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried, Have everyone go away. So there was no one with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept so loud that the Egyptians heard it. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. 
Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? Is he really alive? Or are you really telling me the truth? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. Think of how shocked they must have been. Then, jo then Joseph said to his brothers, Please come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourself. This is forgiveness. This is absolute forgiveness and restoration. Forgiveness is from God. The brothers do not deserve forgiveness. Remember that. You cannot forgive someone who deserves forgiveness. You can only forgive someone who does not deserve forgiveness. God forgives us. Do we deserve forgiveness? No, we don't. If we deserve forgiveness, it would not be forgiveness. It would be understanding. Do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. This is amazing. I mean, I wouldn't kill them, but I would want them to feel bad. Joseph, what Joseph is saying is, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad about it. Can you imagine that? This is Christ's likeness. God sent me before you to preserve life. God did this so that we could be saved. Has it ever occurred to you that one reason you might be suffering is so somebody else could be saved? That God might be using your suffering like He uses Christ's suffering? That your undeserved suffering can be so much like Christ's suffering that God might use it to help save somebody? That maybe what we think ought not to be, how can I save myself and get out of this suffering? But how God can use this suffering to save somebody else? This was Joseph's perspective. That's a New Testament perspective. But we find it deep in the Old Testament, in the very first book of the Bible. We find it articulated by Joseph in Genesis 45. You see, this is a spiritual insight into the way that God works. This is a very New Testament observation, and we're finding it in the pages of the book of Genesis. Verse 7, God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. You know, if we never get into trouble, we will never know God as a God of deliverance. Psalm 68.20 says that God is a God of great deliverances. But if you and I are never in trouble, then there's never anything that God has to deliver us from. We will never know God as a God of deliverance unless there's something we need to be rescued from. Joseph understood this. Now look at this. He understands God's sovereignty. Look at verse 8. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here. It was God. He made me like a father to Pharaoh. What does a father do? He gives us life. Who gave Pharaoh life? Joseph did. He made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his household and ruler over all the land. Now hurry, go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall live in the land of Goshen. You shall be near me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks, your herds, all that you have. These I will provide for you. Behold, your eyes see, verse 12, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth which is speaking to you. Now you must tell my father of all the splendor of Egypt. You must tell him to hurry. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. He kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And afterwards his brothers talked with him. 
When news was heard in Pharaoh's house that Joseph's brothers had come, it pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Pharaoh said, Say to your brothers, Load your beasts and go to the land of Canaan. Take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. So, in verse 21, the brothers of Joseph, the sons of Jacob, they leave. And they take grain and they take bread and they take donkeys with us. And they come to the land of Canaan to Jacob in verse 26, and they say to him, Joseph is still alive. And he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now, what happens when a believer loses a child? Well, usually, it is the worst thing that can ever happen. It is the greatest pain that anybody can ever feel to lose a child. There's no greater pain than that. Joseph had lo- Jacob had lost a child. And then one day, he hears he's not dead. He's alive in another country. Well, every believer who loses a child who's a believer or who's a small child, one day will die. And when we die, we will discover he's not dead. He's alive. He's alive in another country. That's the news that Jacob hears. And the news is so overwhelming, he can't believe it. He simply can't believe it. And I imagine it was great embarrassment because the brothers had to tell him what they'd done. They had to tell him all that they knew all along that Joseph was not torn up by wild animals, that they sold Joseph because they hated him and to get money. And Joseph saved them because he loved them. He returned love for hatred. He did not believe them, verse 26. When they told him all the words of Joseph, when he saw the wagons, His spirit revived. Then he believed them because Joseph sent proof with all the things that they brought from Egypt. Israel said, It is enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Now, the rest of the book of Genesis is what we call anticlimax in English. It's really what happens from now on is not as important as what's already happened. There are just a few little things that that we, we clean up. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.